Hello, welcome to my series about all shop and mazurkas. Today I want to talk about mazurka opus 59, number one. So we open a new opus. We approach the, the latest period of Chopin's life. Chopin is 35 years old uh, when he composed this piece and this, this opus. And indeed it's very special, very deep. And I, I, I dare say it's a bit difficult to understand. So I today try to focus on explaining it uh, and connect to Chopin's life, because I think in this opus it's extremely important. And what I found here is, is really special uh, and it makes me feel touched, I would say. Um, when I discovered connections between Chopin's biography, Chopin's life, and this opus. And indeed, we, we are bound to do this, because especially in Mazurkas, um, Mazurkas are like Chopin's diary. So he was extremely sincere and he put all what was inside him into this music. So let's listen to the beginning. And I want you to try to answer one important and very difficult question. What is the character of the first theme, of the first phrase? part part a let's call it part a and yes what is the character well i think it's not easy to answer and there is no good answer because there is no one character it's waving around and this is very special this is very symbolic and why it is so it is because chopin is mixing major and minor he's he is uh, showing us the melody in minor first and then immediately after the first melody he is showing this very same melody in major. It sounds very strange. You know, minor is sad, major is happy. We call it in music, these two different keys. If we play the same melody in both, it always sounds a little strange. For example, I don't know, let's try with the very famous Fidelise by Beethoven. And then this was in minor and it brings us a kind of feeling of missing something, of some nostalgia, right? Because it's minor. But then if we play it major... Yeah, it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy. But I, I do it on purpose just to show you the difference. And now let's go back to this mazurka. And let's see the melody. And 
the very same melody in major it's it's really special and let's think about it a little bit um, it is a symbol that there are mixed feelings inside the composer who wrote this it's like he can't decide what in what which mood he is now and it's it's as i said before it's strictly connected with what happened in chopin's life before he wrote this set of mazurkas there were two very important things um, in chopin's life that made an impact on all his psychic and all his soul first of all um, in may 1844 his father died and for chopin it was really terrible it was terrible experience well like for all of us i think it would be we we have um i have here the book the book is it's extremely important for me uh, it's an old book but this is those are all letters written by chopin but also other uh, people connected with chopin and around his life and in the year 1844 may 12th georges saint is writing a letter to Auguste Franchon, one of Chopin's friends, and she writes as follows. Well, I translate from, from Polish now, so I quote. Dear Monsieur Franchon, our poor Chopin found out just, just a minute ago about his, the, the death of his father. He heard about the death of his father. He closed himself in his room. But I beg you, please come to visit him tomorrow, because you are one of few people who can, who can uh, make him feel better. I, myself, suffer too much to help him. That's what she writes and in a letter to to the doctor in paris she writes as follows and i quote dear dr molin please come to me immediately chopin heard about the death of his father he is devastated and i'm also devastated together with him he doesn't want to see anybody today but I would like to talk with you about him, so please come and ask about me. We can imagine Chopin, who was completely devastated, and it was it was the end of the existence of one of the most important persons of his life, his father, with whom he had a great connection. He wrote a lot of letters; um, they exchanged a lot of letters, and um, that was that was really sad. So this was one part of Chopin's soul. And another thing, extremely happy, one of the most happy things that happened in Chopin's life uh, as an emigrant was the visit of his beloved sister, Sister Ludwika. She finally, after many years, she came to Paris to visit Chopin. And how, how important it was for Chopin, we we know from a letter uh, which Georges Saint wrote to sister of Chopin, sister Ludwika, after she came back to Warsaw, and Georges Saint wrote a very touching letter, which is extremely important, I think, also for us to to understand the whole Opus Fifty Nine. My my beloved Ludwika writes Georges Saint. We leave, uh, um, how, to, how to translate, um, after you left, we cannot think about anything else but only about you, she writes. You can imagine how much 
Chopin was suffering after you left. But his health was quite good uh, after you left. The decision, your decision of coming to visit Chopin had a great impact on him. It deleted the whole bitterness from his soul and it made him powerful and brave. When he, uh, when somebody gets so much happiness during one month, and it's impossible that it disappear immediately, it stays, and a lot of wounds uh, are mm, are cured because of this happiness. I assure you that you are the best doctor that. Chopin ever had because it's enough to just start to talk about you to make him love life again to make him feel enthusiastic again this is so sound um, and now go back going back to mazurkas and mazurka a minor the whole the whole opus, in fact, opus 59, is a mixture of major and minor. It's a mixture of sadness and happiness. Some bright, some dark. And why? I was, you know, I, I, I played this opus for many years and I was wondering many times why it's so hard to get the character. And I think this is the answer. The answer is that Chopin was himself full of mixed feelings. And let's now analyze the beginning. We have the major, the melody, the major. So let's call it the sad part of Chopin's soul in that moment. Now the same person, the same melody, but in major. Here we have the second melody. This is the second melody in major. And now what is here? Yes, it's also the same melody, the same which was before, but in minor. So just look how genius it is. We have first minor, then repeated the same melody in major. And then afterwards we have the another melody in major and then change to minor and this is exactly the meaning of the two different kind of feelings inside somebody maybe all of us have this kind of period of our lives that something good happens and something bad happens and so this is how we can express it pianist have a great challenge uh, working on the interpretation of this mazurka. Here I think it's crucial to differentiate the touch, the way of touching the keyboard uh, when we play minor and major. It has to be very clear that the, the character is changing. So at first we need to achieve very sad touch it's as if we try to touch a person who is crying, who suffer, is suffering, and we suffer with her, but we touch her to comfort her. And now, immediately changing for a happy touch, like we want to touch, I don't know, a, a kid or somebody who is happy. Different touch, different sound. Again, set touch. So I think it's you can hear the difference. 
it's very very inspiring in fact working on this changing immediately the touch but also very difficult okay what happens next second time the same third time and then, and then the dancing like a mazur a little bit here we have also a very interesting thing at the one at one point we have a dance right but now I, if i play it like this i think it doesn't sound well because this is a dance but it's a one motif which is chromatically going down and the chromatically going down it means a suffering uh, it's a symbol of suffering so we have again mixture of two different feelings on at one at one side we want to dance but on the other side we are suffering but no and again then we are lost we don't know where to go um, another very in, in, important thing here is that Chopin is playing with the tension and the release, tension and the release. Here we have the tension and release, tension and release, tension and release, tension and release. is extremely important moment listen it's the same melody that was in the beginning but in the left hand and this is something extremely important because here we have a thing that happens in all three mazurkas in opus 59 it is something that connects those mazurkas there are there are a few things that connects those mazurkas one of them is this this dialogue of two different well major minor and the sad and happy but another extremely important which i found is that at least one time or more in every mazurka from op in opus 59 it happens that in the left hand we will hear the same melody that we heard at the beginning it's very special because it doesn't really happen in other mazurkas maybe in a few of them from earlier opuses but it's not so clear like here and it also made me think a lot and made me analyze and look for the answer why is is it so and you know i found something which might be crazy so you you may say that oh this pianist is completely mad he is insane it's too much and uh, maybe chopin well we don't know because chopin is dead and he, he he doesn't he didn't leave any clue he left the open mystery for us so at the same time we can try to to guess and i think for a performer it's very important to get to the point um, with his or her imagination it's very important because we need inspiration and we need to try to get to to feel connection with the composer and it it's it does not only chopin but of course all the other uh, composers which we play so um so i was spending i spent a lot of time thinking about it and now i want to share with you what what i uh, what I feel now so because it's in the left hand and because it's always the melody sung by a man probably older man right where 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 else we have it let's let's analyze it in the mazurka opus 59 number two have it later and in the 
last one. Also, later we hear. Only one time, but there is. And of course you can say it's too much, of course it's a coincidence and all those kind of things. But what I think is that this is like a father or because the father died a year a year uh, ago, it's like a, a ghost of the father. It's like the the memory of the father, the symbol of the father who doesn't exist anymore, who exists only in Chopin's head and his love and his heart. Extremely touching moment. So every time when it happens in those mazurkas, I feel extremely touched. And why else why also i think like this because let's just listen to this melody we have the melody here the father but it has no uh, second phrase it disappears the second phrase is in the right hand again so in the right hand again have part B, the big part B, this, the middle part of this mazurka. Extremely beautiful. It starts like sotto voce, so very far away. Very silent. Like a choir singing. Choir of boys, you know the men, men qu men's choir, men choir. <sighs> it's for me. It sounds a little bit like we are in the church and the men choir is singing the the hymn, some kind of. This is very important because when you when you when you listen to the mazurka in the hall, in, uh, when you hear the choir immediately you know oh now it's part b it starts part b and after this choir the most important moment starts So this was the whole part B. <clears throat> what is so special about it? First of all, I think it's not easy to understand. You need to go deeper to the structure of how it's written. So what's so special? First of all, we have a dialogue here. Well, again, it's almost like a duet, like in, in the opera. 
two voices. But it's it's written a little bit misleading way because the first voice starts and then we all think it will be the most important voice, but then no, that the and the soprano comes inside and continue the the main melody. Whereas we still want to listen to the first voice. So let's let's listen to these two voices only. And then and listen. And then the answer. So now I play, I will play for you each voice. First of all, let's listen to the soprano. This is the soprano, extremely beautiful. It's about love, I think. This is the melody about love. They, they, you know, like in the opera duet, they come and they sing together, holding their hands, singing about love. This is the another voice, the baritone. together yes another thing which I love to do to to show this beauty well and when I work on this mazurka on, on when I work on all Chopin music, but especially in this mazurka, I always like to do it, is to play it in an extremely slow tempo. And now I want to play it for you. You know, it's not so common. Well, you will never experience that on concerts, of course. So this is the unique moment now in your life when you can listen to this beauty in a very slow tempo. When we play it in a very slow tempo, we can absorb each harmony. And these harmonies here are exquisite. They are absolutely unforgettable, in my opinion. So just enjoy. I love to practice like this because it also makes me get into conversation with a composer. Because of all these harmonies which I absorb, I, I feel like Chopin is talking to me. When he was composing, he was creating harmonies, right? So he had to experiment hearing the harmonies and listening just, oh, how it's, it's so beautiful. I learned... So, you know, sometimes when I play like this, I have the temptation to record a CD with some of late Chopin late works played extremely slow. I know it would be a shocking CD, but I want to know your opinion. What do you think about it? How you, would you react um, on such a CD? Would it be popular? Would it be? Well, it would be special because nobody ever did something like that. So maybe I will do it or at least a few a few pieces so that we can we all can experience this beauty of slow be fantastically beautiful harmonies written by Chopin 
it's extremely difficult, uh, extremely sorry, important moment in this mazurka because it will come back at the very end. But what happens next? Because it's also very, very nice. We have like a dance, but interrupted. And two hands are completely opposite to each other. They are not doing the same thing at the same time. It's a bit funny. We have like a mazur dance. So this. Sorry. But only two bars, and then no dance. It's like a scream. And then oh, going down. So right hand has two bars dance and then two bars of something else. The scream, the drama. And left hand is the opposite. So it's it's like this. When when right hand is dancing, left hand is not dancing. It has a scale. It has nothing to do with the accompaniment to dance. So but then left hand after two bars thinks, okay, I dance with the right hand, then I will do it. So we have um pa pa, right? But the problem is that right hand stopped dancing and decided, okay, if the left hand is not dancing, then I'm not dancing as, as well. Well, now, of course, I do it. I, I'm joking, but that's exactly how it's written. And now left hand is dancing, right hand is not. And it repeats second time. Again. And third time. And fourth time. And finally they are together dancing. So finally we have Mazurka. we come back to the beginning so isn't it funny isn't it genius i think it's it absolutely is genius let's listen again a little slower same as the beginning we all hear well if you don't have perfect pitch we hear as if it's exactly the same but it's not at the beginning we had and here can you hear the difference at the beginning here it's only one semitone one a very very small interval the smallest interval on piano lower than the beginning another symbol this is very important this is the first time ever in all all mazurkas it never happened before that part a the which comes again is a semitone lower uh, it has a meaning of course and of course we can think well what i think of is that there is this the, the person which was at the beginning after all that happened la later is just lost we are lost we are not in the place we we are bound to be we are supposed to be right because we are in a different key and when i perform it i try to make it sound as if i'm lost Foggy. Where I where am I? And then a 
Okay? Now, because we are in a different key, Chopin has to do something to go back to the initial key. And he is doing, he is repeating the same phrase twice. Do you remember this phrase? It was before like a dance, but chromatically going down every every single time. Play it for you again so that we can we can hear. We have the third. Now here, to be in the same key again, Chopin has to repeat the same phrase two times. Second. And now we are in the same key. And then a ghost of a father. which for me is extremely touching first of all the character we are a bit afraid it's very mysterious the harmony is very mysterious and then a question it's like a rhetoric question rhetorical question it goes to the space, but it, the answer doesn't come. It's a kind of screaming question. And the silence, nobody answers. And the second time. And finally the answer comes. And what comes at the answer now, when I play it for you, I'm sure you will feel something very special. Who is answering? Yes, the father. The ghost of the father. And then the end. this mazurka something magic magical happen again also the part a of mazurka and part b of mazurka they are united they get together how well first of all these two questions they are based on the motif which do you remember the opera motif this uh, is exactly the same if we have here Here we have it as a question. So it's like about love, it was about love. And now the ghost of the father. And at the end, this love theme. So is this like a love for the ghost of father and everything disappears I love this ending because when I play this here we have the ending and everything disappears very 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 beautiful let me play it again from the beginning. A major. Major. A minor.
Charlie and the choir. And then the love duet. beautiful masterpiece. I hope you enjoyed this video. I invite you to watch my other videos if you didn't, if you haven't done it so yet. And see you again next week, the next episode. Take care. Bye bye.